Hello, my friends. Hello, my life warriors, wherever you are in the world. I hope you're having a good day. Uh, yes, this is podcast number I can't remember uh, with, with my lovely lady, uh, Carolyn Goddard. Hello. How are you today? I'm okay. It's a bit cold in our podcast studio. Uh, slash spare bedroom <laughs> <laughs> but i'm sure that after this conversation i will be all excited and warmed up what can i say well maybe if we put on the heat and a little bit more uh, work, that's work unnecessary that. we don't need that i think just put do. on a jumper <laughs> anyway yes i'd like to thank you uh for uh, doing this for me today no problem uh, this might be the first podcast of many you might be on <laughs> i won't lie but yes uh one of the things i wanted to talk about today maybe going around a number of different subjects is uh, your time at cambridge uh what made you decide to do the mba of all things um okay so um, where do you want me to start well like what well from initial inception until you know your time going to cambridge so I decided to do an MBA because I had been working for about eight or nine years after my uh, undergraduate degree and I wanted to expand the range of my knowledge because whilst I've been working in finance, mm -hmm. um, I had a relatively restricted range of understanding. Uh, it was limited to the alternative finance industry in the UK and very much towards kind of change management and process improvement. So. As ultimately I wanted to start my own business, I wanted to expand my range of knowledge in, into things like marketing, strategy, new business, new venture finance, all of those type of areas, which I wouldn't be able to do without some kind of undertaking, like an MBA or doing it part time. Mm. Um, and I didn't want to take the risk of starting the business without that, that kind of knowledge. Um, and I also thought it was a pretty risk-free option in a way because whilst it did cost a reasonable amount of money um the benefit was always even if i didn't start the business that i would come out at a higher salary so it was a it was a, a big undertaking it was a risk undertaking but it it was at the same time it, it had a number of good outputs at the end you were i wasn't likely to end up in a worse position okay so you just saw it as purely upside yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, like I said, I mean, it was hard work and it was very expensive and it was very disruptive to, to us, to me and to us. Um, mm. But like I said, it, it's it would it's uh, a rare person who walks out of an MBA into a lower salary job unless they're doing something that is particularly important to them, such as setting up their own business, um, which again has, you know, would have, have huge benefits in the long term anyway. Okay, that's great. Uh, when, like, when, so when you decided to do the MBA, uh, so what are some of the sort of first steps you have to do to undertake your MBA journey? Is it a case of you just decide you go and you're just doing an MBA or do you have to do other steps beforehand? No, so um, one of the things, I mean, one of the first things is that you, is just a, it's just a time thing. You have to have normally a minimum amount of work experience before they'll take you. So this isn't something you can do straight out of an undergraduate degree. So for the, I was looking at the London uh, School of Business, mm -hmm. uh, the Judge School at Cambridge and yeah. Oxford SAT. Uh, yeah, when you say a time thing, what what sort of length of time are we talking? So the minimum for all of those schools is six years mm -hmm. of work experience. So the absolute earliest you can do it is kind of your mid-20s, depending on when you finish your undergraduate degree. Yeah. So I was a little bit older than the rest of the, uh, well, I was at the older end of the cohort, <laughs> should we say. Um, shout out to Catherine Rock, who's older than me. Uh, <laughs> but so... I could have been eligible for doing the EMBA, which is the executive MBA, which okay. is done part time. They normally want you to have about nine or 10 years of work experience. So mm. I was getting close to being able to do that as well. Okay. Um, so in addition to that, you have to generally have shown that you've kind of done well in your career. So you need to be able to argue that you've been involved in reasonable sized projects, mm. business undertakings, you've done something. There are some people who come do, do a PhD and then a short bout of work, but then they will take the PhD into consideration. So you may have done a PhD in a particularly relevant area. Um, so for me, working on a couple of big projects with my former employer 
was really helpful as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the final thing you have to have is your GMAT. Okay, and what is the GMAT? So the GMAT is a standardised test uh, that is conducted, uh, the same same test no matter where you are in the world, and it's split down into three parts, if I can remember correctly. I've largely blocked out the horror <laughs> of the GMAT. So you're saying it was that bad? <laughs> so there was a reasoning section a numeracy a new you know, numeracy section numeracy numeracy section yeah and a english language section and it's always conducted in english as well so it doesn't matter where you're in the world which gives us as i i've said before slightly unfair advantage if you're a natural english speaker yeah whether american australian british um but obviously people can have the option to catch up as well in terms of doing exceedingly well on the maths so I'd always mentally consider myself to be quite strong in mathematics and actually found that to be exceptionally difficult because the whole test is timed. Okay. So there's a lot of practice that you can do and I, I did I did um, hours of practice and I left quite a long time frame in order to be able to actually study for this. Um, so I, I when I applied for the MBA, I was actually in the first round of application to the following year when I could have got into the final round of the year before if I'd rushed to GMAT, but I decided that I wanted a three to six months run at it. Yeah. And they recommend anywhere between six six weeks to six months because it's very intensive. You have to be able to do the math things on a, in about an average of one question a minute. And there, you can't say calculator in. So they're all ones that in theory can be done in your head or through working out, but it's actually reasonably quite difficult to do and to achieve it in that time. So luckily, thank goodness, I managed to do mid, mid-level, mid-league on the maths, <laughs> but top-tier Man United of the uh, English language section. Right. I wouldn't say top tier Man United. Uh, right. That's going through a bit I'm, of a. I'm current Man United. <laughs> for the. Uh... <laughs> it's like, mm, wow. <laughs> I'm not uh, gonna... 1992 Man United for the for the English language uh, section. <laughs> well, current uh, Man United for the math section. I feel sorry for you that you have to do a throwback oh, to that throwback. amount of time. Don't make me have to. Don't make me have to say Schmeichel. Look, 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 like, look. I'm just amazed that you're using a Man United. Like thought, analogy I for I how well a, you a good work. Reference. <laughs> like a, yeah, I, well, at this present day, uh, Man United, it's not a, what I would call a good sporting reference to be used. It's it internationally translate, and I'm, I assume this podcast is going out to an international audience. <laughs> Otherwise, no, why am I here? <laughs> like, you're here because you are being very supportive. Remember That's this. True. That's true. <laughs> so yeah, so the, the three things you need is is work experience, mm. good work experience. Um, in a range of areas so you can demonstrate a set of skills and to be able to do your GMAT now the average score I think for the GMAT is around 690 okay if you're wanting to go to one of the top tier schools you're going to have to get above that so oh. I got 720 in the end yeah um, and I wasn't in the top range of people people's GMAT scores let's put it that way right uh, I what is the top score you can get? I think the very top is 800. I don't, I don't think it's actually physically, you know, like maybe one person a year get, that actually gets 800. <laughs> I think the highest score of anybody who was in our cohort at Cambridge was about 760. 760? Yeah. Uh, big brain on campus. Big brain on campus. Uh. Don't know who that was. <laughs> so, okay, you've gone like gone through the GMAT, you scored 720. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're quite proud of yourself. Like, yeah, so... Was it what was the sort of next stage after that? Was it a case of so then you're into the application stage? Uh Um, so unlike undergraduate in the UK, where you apply through a central the UCAS system, yeah, and and you do all your applications to you do one application and they send it out to universities Mm. for doing a MBA, you're applying to each individual university. So, you the application process is, is similar for each one. I applied to London Business School and to Judge at Cambridge in the end. Um, and they will ask you a whole series of questions. It's kind of halfway between an academic like assessment mm. and a job assessment. So, applying for a job and applying for an academic side. They will ask you about your academic side and then they'll ask you a lot about your job, your job side. And you submit that application along with evidence of your GMAT score. 
there's also cost attached to that. So the applications themselves are a couple of hundred pounds. Okay. So hence why I limited it down to two in the end for the two that I actually wanted to go to. Um, so you don't want to end up applying probably to more than three just because of the prohibitive cost. The next stage after that, if you get through that application process, is then you've got to go to interview. So right. again, if you're doing outside, if you're going, if you're planning to go to study your MBA outside of your home country, then you also have to factor in the cost of going to the interview. They will not mm. generally do telephone interviews. Some of the bigger schools might do interviews in certain countries okay. to avoid traveling. But if you're coming from one of the smaller, you know, if you're not coming from America or if you're not coming from China, India perhaps, the chances are you're going to have to travel to that country. So again, you need to factor in the cost of your interviews. Okay. And when you decided on your two schools, why did you choose a London Business School and Cambridge? Just because they were both at the top of the tier of the Sunday Times uh, school rankings. Okay. I mean, if I'm going to spend tens of thousands of pounds to do a course, I'm not going down to the bottom tier, am I? <laughs> um Sorry, University of Lancaster and Manchester. Manchester being my old university, but you do not rank highly enough. Oh. <laughs> no, it, I mean, it's a simple financial transaction. At the end of the day, there's a lot of people who do MBAs. There's far yes. more people who do MBAs nowadays. So you do need, if you want it to be worth the investment, you need to go to a top tier school. Otherwise, I would say don't bother. Genu generally, yeah. Okay, and with regards to the top tier, like you, London Business School, like I understand, always been in the sort of top three, top four. Yeah, uh, so obviously you've got um, INSEAD, you've got Harvard, mm. um, you have London Business School, Cambridge was goes up and down quite a bit. Um, yeah. Actually, out of the UK schools, London Business School is, is the best one. Okay. Um, so, and again, you know, you've got different ones. I can't, oh, there was one in America that I was looking at that wasn't Harvard. Over to Stanford? Ber 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 Berkeley. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, again, obviously... In our discussions, we pretty much discounted going abroad to do it. Mm. Um, and also, the, most most of the foreign schools are two-year courses. So this was one of the kind of deciding factors with me over the length of the course. Um, so that that really was the two the two that I was particularly interested in, based on the fact that we wanted to stay in the UK, were, were Judge and uh, London Business School. Indeed. Okay. Yes. Uh, I, if I remember rightly, London Business School was a, actually, a, was it an 18 month or a two year school? They call uh, it a two year. You can finish a little bit earlier, but effectively, uh, yeah. So it's, it's um, Cambridge is one of the few ones that offers a one year MBA. Yeah. Um, like I said, the vast majority of the other ones are two year MBAs. And for me, that was probably the deciding factor in, in how we were going to do it. So obviously, in terms of, the cost element, yeah. because it's a really serious part of your consideration for an MBA, all jokes aside, is it is ex exceptionally expensive. And that's why I would say don't bother going to a lower quality school. Yeah. Um, and for me, the cost of being out of work for two years, plus the additional um, fees for the two years, obviously you'll pay more to do two years than you do to pay do one year. Yeah, absolutely. Made the overall cost of the MBA prohibitive. In addition, from the perspective of London, you also have to factor into account the living costs of London, which are far greater than anywhere else in the UK. So if you're in London doing a two-year MBA and not working, mm. I estimated it, including uh, there was a £30,000 scholarship that I was offered, it was still going to cost somewhere in the region of £75,000. How where, much? £75,000. <laughs> Whereas for Cambridge, doing it on one year, taking into account the living costs and being out of work, yes. that it only, and I was lucky enough to get a £15,000 scholarship from them, so half the scholarship, but I still came out at the total cost of being around £45,000 to £50,000. Okay. So that, when I was doing my final kind of judgment between the two, because I got offers from both, Mm. It was very much a, a spreadsheet exercise. <laughs> <laughs> you knew exactly. it was coming. Uh, oh. look, 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 you and your spreadsheet. <laughs> Mate, it's the only way to go uh, No, that. it's not. Oh, okay. It is. No. It is. No. The whole world is run on spreadsheets. <laughs> oh, Literally. Okay. okay. Google. No. Google pretends, I bet you, that they're all really, really fancy. But any money in the background, somebody's uh, doing something on a spreadsheet. You're a sick woman. You need to get over this. <laughs> um, I saw somebody trying to sell an idea to to revolutionise spreadsheets the other day. What was this? A revolution and, uh, it's a unicorn as well they're valued at a billion pounds already I can't remember the name of the, the, the company and I went and had a quick spy on it and I was like 
that you've destroyed the the very integrity of a spreadsheet. So what is the name of this company? I can't remember. I can't but remember. I'm gonna because have to like okay, don't get me wrong. Like okay, when I use a spreadsheet, it is quite simple. It's quite basic. Uh, yeah, but. <laughs> sort of changing the sort of dynamic of a spreadsheet i'm not too sure what you really can do basically with that. they just made a basic spreadsheet pretty for people who don't know how to use excel properly which is fine i guess <laughs> but excel's free why would you pay for that product oh. and also learn how to use excel properly come on people it's like the, the integral tool of our times how is the integral tool of our times? i'm telling you i'm not i'm not even joking if you got rid of Excel, if you got rid of a spreadsheet program, the, our economy would collapse overnight. <laughs> People rioting, things were burning in the street. <laughs> really? 100%. Okay. Like, 100%. <laughs> oh, how are you getting all of your data for your job at the moment, Mimo? Is it coming in Excel for all that, my John? It comes off a database and they put it on a spreadsheet. For this. No, no, no. <laughs> but like, I'm sure they would let me have access to this database if there wasn't such things as spreadsheets. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> anyway, so okay. to get back on track, <laughs> yes. there was a spreadsheet. I, I did, it. you know, you fact, factoring your different cost elements is what I'm saying. So you have your admission fees, which you can net off with any scholarships and grants and bursaries that you can get. And I would, okay. I would say, particularly if you're a woman, mm apply for as many bursaries as you can because you you are, there is a reasonably high amount of grants that are available to you there's grants that are specific for p people of different nationalities and ethnicities and there are general grants that are available for for women yes uh, because women at the moment still only represent about 30 percent of the mbas um so that that's you know take that into account and then factor in your living costs now we lived reasonably expensively even in cambridge because we i didn't go into student accommodation we got a flat etc yeah. etc et but cb1 baby cb1, CB1 yeah <laughs> um no you and you could do it a lot cheaper now again for me that was a personal issue being slightly older than the rest of the group so well, a lot of people in the late 20s i had absolutely no desire whatsoever to go back and share accommodation with people I mean, I couldn't, honest to God, I couldn't think of anything I'd less want to do. Um, no, sorry, I've lived by myself for too long to be messing around with that shabazz. Now you live with me. And Yay. now I live with you. You're a cruel woman. I'm a me lady. <laughs> yes, you are me. <laughs> Very me. Yeah. So factor into that all that and, and, and add up a total. And, add up total and, and, and and do factor in the fact that you are not working so you're mm. living you you have to have the money available to live and you're not going to be able to do any savings yeah. and you know by the end of it effectively I mean I would have been very fortunate in terms of being able to sell a flat in Manchester and, and get some money out of that not not enough to cover the MBA by any okay. stretch of imagination but enough to keep us going so in between you working being able to contribute to the flat the money that I already mm -hmm. had in savings um but by the time I finished the MBA, as as you know, I was down to my last shekel. Shekel. Denari. Yeah, I was gonna. Have to, I was gonna have to put you out on Wait. the put you out on the street, mate. No, I don't think so. No, 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 no. <laughs> this man would not be walking get, the street. You get down the milk. <laughs> uh, once again, you're a mean lady. Mean lady. <laughs> so. So and 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 unfortunately, I, I regret that slightly. In fact, um, if I hadn't won that award okay. during the MBA, mm. I'd have had to go back to work even earlier. Ah. Uh, so thankfully, I I, um, I won an award called the the Palmy Prize by a lovely gentleman called Richard Palmy um, for my business idea, uh, which was it was two thousand pounds. But that really enabled me to study for the rest of the summer. Okay. So rather than having to go out and get a work uh, placement, which a lot of people did, which you can get paid for, because mm -hmm. the other thing with Cambridge is you're not allowed to you're not allowed to work whilst you're on a degree. Yeah, I did find that strange. Yeah. Uh, no, because I wish that had been a bit more public knowledge before I started. Well, yeah, because without like with the Cambridge system in the colleges uh, which I found not Angela Ruskin that's how you can tell who's going to Angela Ruskin and who's going to a college um, if they go yes I'm working uh, yeah they're going to Angela Ruskin if they can't if they're not allowed to work they're going to a college yeah, um, yeah uh, and, and that applies to 
all it, it is, a, it is a, a cross university policy. So even though the fact we were a bit older mm. and we had all of the you know everything else, it was a it was a blanket ban on yeah. working. Uh, did they say the reason why that it's was? Just, it's just a university prohibition. They just they you know it's an eight hundred year old institution. They okay. do some weird things. Yeah, that was strange because um, I was talking to a chap from Angela Ruskin. Uh, he was a punter on the ri- uh, on the river. You, you've you saw him going past when like Hazel was down. <laughs> was, uh, was he looking at us thinking, "My God, those people don't know how to punt." Uh, well, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, like, that put it this way. Yes, Good this Lord, was that isn't bad punting. Yeah, this was on the way back. I'm not too sure if it was Hazel's turn punting or whatnot. Let's never talk about Hazel punting again. Hey, was... look, look, it was an Jesus experience, lady. What the? <laughs> <laughs> it was experience. I survived. That's the important We're thing. We're all alive. Yeah, Nobody no, I have that. a new appreciation for life. I, think you, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I look at a sunset for a little bit longer. <laughs> just, uh, all like, the colours I, I, I smile. <laughs> and it's like, I'm, mm, like I, the vibrant colours, the, the joys, the sounds, everything. Did give me a great, great Facebook profile picture, though. <laughs> Knocking, n- necking a bottle of cider whilst pointing at University uh, College. Uh, um, yes. In the sunshine. Uh, shining example there. A shining example uh, yeah. of uh, the standards of Cambridge students nowadays. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so uh, hence why eventually when, when I added it all up, because I, I, I probably would have gone with Cambridge anyway, even if it had worked out to be about the same price or cheap or, or a bit more expensive. Uh, okay. Because one of the things that I found when I went into the London Business School is that I didn't get a great vibe from it because it's it's a... Uh, ooh, that's the word it's it's a school it's a uni- you know university but it's in london right. so it doesn't have all the students around it you don't live with each other you don't live nearby a lot of people were very spread out people traveled in for it so it was the fact there wasn't so much a community it wasn't vibe. so much of a community vibe which i got a much stronger impression from so, uh-huh. so with the judge business school it's in one building yes um Everybody lives in Cambridge and most people live in the colleges, Mm -hmm. um, college accommodation. There was probably about 10% of us that were in private accommodation. Um, So we, you you were much closer in terms of the actual class. You made much closer friends. Mm. So there was that. And also, I mean, personally speaking, I wasn't particularly bothered about staying in London, as as you know. (laughs) Um, And I will say for Cambridge, on. Given that I had been to Cambridge before, but obviously when I was much, much younger, yeah. the, your first visit to Cambridge as an outsider it is it will take it takes your breath away. It is an exceptionally beautiful, no, don't get historic yeah. town. No, this is the thing. Like Cambridge, like with like when you go there for the first time, you look around, see the spires, everything like that. Yeah, it is impressive. You like you you do nice. the punting. Yeah, it is impressive, uh, but like. If when you're living there, it, it gets it. Don't look. I really like the people of Cambridge a lot. They are fantastic, like all in all. But like, yeah, for me as a sort of Londoner, like Cambridge was some a little bit more sedate for my liking. Ex- exactly, and I, I think I mean I enjoyed the the eighteen months that we spent there in the end. Mm. Um, and actually, I was like I said for all the different reasons. I probably for you know for the aesthetic reasons of just how nice and pretty Cambridge is. Yeah. For the fact that it was much cheaper for me to do the MBA and I could get it done in a year. Mm. Um, and for just just for the community aspect of the MBA as well, and then the fact that I wanted to be in a group of people who were all studying together and working together and aiming for the same thing, yeah. but also still very multicultural. And there was lots of different people from different areas of the world, and you know it was, it was really great mix of people that I. You know, for the, for those reasons, Cambridge was probably always going to edge out London Business School for me. Okay. Um, which is not to say that London Business School wouldn't be an absolutely fabulous place to go and do your MBA. I mean, I'm sure you mm-hmm. you know, um, and actually potentially in terms of the range of possibilities as a result of it, there's probably slightly more out of that LBS because you are in London. Yes, um, I would imagine it might have a slightly tighter connection to many a sort of firm and company. I, I, I do think so. And, and But again, because of my, my end goal, my end aim is to set up my own company, I didn't quite have that same motivation mm-hmm. to get in with the big corporate right. world. Yeah. Um, so, you know, post MBA and, and at the moment, I'm still working back in a similar industry that I was in before. In fact, I'm back at the same company that I was at before. But that is, you know, for me, that's absolutely fine. That's that's not. Mm. I I don't mind because it's 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 a stepping stone. I ran out of money. I'm 
as you, we're a very practical person when it comes to this. Yeah. You know, I don't want to live under a railway arch. So <laughs> I am going to take a job to save the money to yeah. then enable me in the next couple of years to have a good nest egg again behind me to be able to go and set up my own company and to, to operate on you know, to, to bootstrap, as I call it, myself for a few years without hopefully I haven't taken any or too much investment. Okay, yeah, just to sort of pull you back slightly, mm -hmm. you say you, like, went back to the same company, but, like, with that and doing the MBA, so what would you say is different now about you, like, pre-MBA to post-MBA? Um, I've definitely got a much better understanding and appreciation of business, mm -hmm. um, particularly, I think, around those elements I said that I didn't have before. Um, one of the things that it really reminded me of was the need to focus on on the customers. Mm -hmm. And actually, that can be an incredible frustration now back in the in the the real world okay. because whereas before I was very much just head down, let's get the problem solved. Now mm. it's kind of got, I've got a slightly bigger picture mentality. I can look at it and think, that's really not the right way to do things. <laughs> oh my God. But obviously I'm still in not at a position where I can actually reasonably affect the change of direction of a company. Okay. Um, so, th so that's an interesting kind of side product of it. I mm. mean, again, what I found really, really helpful out of the MBA was more about the ideas it gave me towards my business. So they're a business idea the core of it is still the same as yes. when I entered the MBA, okay. but everything around it has changed so dramatically. I mean, the the approach that we're taking, the the you know the way that we that we want to deal with the customers, the the kind of market aspect of it all, the way that we were looking at raising finance mm -hmm. is I could not have done it without the MBA. The, the, this idea would not be the sh in the good position that it's in, and I ultimately probably just wouldn't have gone anywhere if I hadn't done the MBA. Okay, so basically big picture thinking and basically uh, a new level of focus. Yeah, and I mean, just some really practical things as well. I mean, I did a contract immediately after the MBA mm -hmm. um, with with a software company and even just some really like, yeah, like I said, really practical things that we did on some of the courses. So we did a great, um, great course on st uh, kind of statistics. Okay. Um, and understanding how all of that worked. Um, and I applied some of that immediately. Uh, so Monte Carlo simulations, and that has worked out really well. So for the estimates for how that product would work for that company. And so far, I mean, I, I was I was out last night with w one of the guys uh, <laughs> from that company, and he's, he's advised that they're on track to hit the targets that I, that I predicted based on some, you know, uh, some really good simulation of what, we, what that company could achieve with that product. Okay. So that, again, like just really practically, I just wouldn't have known how to do that but prior to the MBA. Um, and at the moment, I think one of the frustrations I have with my, the current role, whilst I, I appreciate it, it's just a holding job to, to get some additional money. Uh, and to, you know, to continue to experience it, you yeah. know, to, to improve my career, but I don't have the scope to actually embed a lot of what I've learned from the MBA. And that, that is a, that's actually worse now because I know what could be done, mm -hmm. but I, I don't have the ability to, to do it. I see. So with regards to that, it's, you said um, your current like, position is a holding position? I would, I would describe it slightly as that, yeah. I, I I enjoy my job. I love the people I work with, uh, but it is not my long term goal to to be uh, in change and transformation. Change and transformation is possibly one of the most annoying jobs that you can possibly do. <laughs> How so? Because <laughs> change, transformation. Change, oh, it sounds so positive. Uh, no, you Nobody know wants change and transformation. No, but look, it, look, well, change is good, isn't change it? Change is change. Yeah, everybody, everybody will mouth the word that change is good. But then when you say to them, "Oh, by the way, I'm doing this," okay, and everyone goes, "What? No, you can't take away my X, whatever it is." Oh yeah, but we're replacing it with this better thing. But I don't want that. <laughs> um, X and so on and so forth. And 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 again, what I find interesting now, I think again because it's bigger picture, I've got the bigger picture element of it. Yes, is that. And I'd started to touch on this before I even did the MBA, um, is that change and transformation shouldn't be a standalone function, mm. which it is at the moment in a lot of the UK finance industry. Um, I've, I was speaking to people from around the world, they actually said that's quite an unusual thing, and I can see why, because 
in effect, you shouldn't just just be doing change and transformation for the sake of transformation. You should be doing it to affect a different a, a different direction in the business. You should be doing it to create new products. It could be part of the product team. It could be yeah. part of the operations team to work, run more effectively. And I find that that is actually that's where I think my frustration. I think this frustration will come in, and that's why I say I don't think it's it's the company that I'm at. I think it's the nature of how how we do things here in the UK. Okay. That actually it's probably not the best way to do it, and and in effect, it would be. I think I need to, I need to look at slightly differently about how perhaps I approach. If I was to stay in this career, my business idea doesn't take off. Yes. I perhaps need to transition into a more kind of all encompassing role. Okay. Where you deal with a little bit of day to day management and stuff, perhaps a, a, um, a head head of operations, a kind of COO role, chief of operations role, mm-hmm. where you that kind of change element is embedded in your job, but it's not your sole job, and I think that's what I'm finding frustrating at the moment. Okay, oh, I see. Very interesting. Very interesting indeed. Uh, so, oh, right. so bring it to of uh, to with the people you've met on the MBA. Uh, how do you think that sort of helped you with your sort of growth and development? Because a lot of the times it's sold upon the networks you build. I definitely think the networks have helped. I mean, one of the interesting things is because I am in a reasonably niche industry mm-hmm. uh, and my business idea is, is in a reasonably niche industry, I wouldn't say that the contacts that I made through the MBA have particularly helped directly for that idea okay but what they have done is 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 when i've discussed it with people and when we've had conversations about it is they've they've helped to broaden my mind outside of it as well so they've thrown different ideas at me they've talked about as i was saying there's you know the different ways that things operate in different cultures so even just you know basic you know you think we think of uh, britain and america and australia as being very similar but actually the kind of working environment is quite different so i mean particularly the americans i found really interesting to talk to because they have such a different mentality towards work. How so? I, in the, I mean, I don't know if it's necessarily a good good thing or a bad thing, but there is definitely a much greater kind of emphasis on being there and doing things and doing things all the time and actually kind of really, I want to say pushing yourself. I don't know if that's the right word. Was it, taking ownership. Taking ownership. And, and, and it's not... It's not frowned upon to be a good worker. Whereas I think in the UK, there's always a little bit of an element of that kind of... Brown-nosing. It, you, you're either brown-nosing or you're a bit of a swat or you're taking mm. it too seriously or you're, you're married to the company, etc. Um, and I think that's just the British kind of mentality of laughing at people who take themselves too seriously. And once you, you have to park that a bit when you're dealing with the Americans. It's remember that they're doing it sincerely. Yeah. So um, Don't apply your own cynicism and sarcasm to them. So when I said ownership, would I like? I think maybe more taking pride in what they're doing. Pride, yeah, and and, and comfortable to give their heart and soul to a company as well, mm. and really like and really having a company actually mean something to them. And like one of the great things I found with a lot of the people on the MBA was that they were very interested in social enterprises. Okay. So, or even not if if they couldn't get into the social enterprise world, into companies that have quite a strong corporate social responsibility. And, you know, those companies were picking up a lot of people out of our MBA. Right, like um, which companies? So, I mean, Patagonia was one that we did a lot of. So they're this, they're an apparel brand. They do outdoor clothing. Okay. Um, again, much bigger, I think, in America than it hit perhaps here in the UK, although I have seen them in the UK. Okay. And they have a very strong CSR in terms of a kind of use of organic cotton. Not and CSR? Uh, corporate social responsibility. Okay. So that's in terms of, you know, making sure workers are paid correctly, mm. their supply chain doesn't involve an exploitative labor yeah. etc so it's and again i even now i feel a little bit cynical talking about it because the kind of british mentality <laughs> is to be a bit eye roll about that it's a bit like oh guys let's let's all get together and have a huddle oh yeah let's get this day going but you have to park <laughs> that kind of british like oh my god what are you doing okay uh, you're hurting me uh, but, and actually if you look at it if, and, and you take off your like i said your cynical hat it's actually quite an interesting way of, of working and like i said that they're, they're not cynical about it at all then they right. they want to work for those type of companies and those type of companies are kind of in exchange they get a feeling of like you know well-being from actually working from those kind yeah. of companies and so they're willing to exchange their kind of heart and soul with them and i found that i found that quite 
enlightening in a way like I still could not get into a huddle and shout about how (laughs) awesome the day is going to be but at the same time I kind of parked a little bit of my own kind of yeah like it sounds like you (laughs) did like do admire it in some respects I do yeah 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 I mean and again it's not like I said it's not done in a in a kind of brown nosing brown nosing exactly the right way brown nosing weird kind of way mm. it's done honestly and I, I found that I quite I think that's a, more of a UK perception yeah. as you said earlier but also it wasn't just the Americans I mean I, you know there was the, we had a lot of Chinese people on our course we had a lot of Indian people on our course mm. and I mean the Indians just blow your mind like they are just so committed to to their development and again i mean that in a positive way you know yeah. that nobody is being cynical about it and saying oh no i just i just want to you know do you know i just want to get a nice house and then settle down and it's like no i'm going to do this i'm going to do this i'm going to do this and this mm. is my plan and this is what i'm going to do and i'm going to stay in the uk for this amount of time i'm going to get my visa i'm going to improve my english language skills and i'm going to do this and then i'm going to go back home and you know i'm going to go to seattle i'm going to work for one of the other and, and like it was just I mean, obviously the NBA attracts a certain type of person into it, but it was quite refreshing again to see that kind of no, this is what I'm going to do mentality. Mm. This is, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to beat about the bush. I'm not going to be embarrassed about it. And and also, I want to make money. Yeah. So like, there was drive with a plan, definitely. Yeah, in and there wasn't place. this kind of shame and embarrassment that again, I think that the the kind of the British have a lot about discussing money and talking about money and. Mm. All, everything that you know goes alongside that and it's you know it's, it's uncouth to say I want money I want to go out and earn cash it is un- it's considered it, mm. yeah like this is the thing I would say I think people would be kind of judged a little bit more if you if they were like yes I, I want to bring in that cash making like making the dollar dollar you know, like one of my favourite shows The Apprentice like yeah when you hear them talking like saying this i shoot for the moon or blah 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 like 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 some of the stuff is ridiculous what they say and i think people frown upon them because they are sort of like how can like it might it's a it's a cartoony like money sort of hungry type thing but i think that's sort of the general perception of quite a lot of people who oh always sort of seem to be going off chasing that buck trying to make that coin or just tr- generally doing the hustle over here um i could be wrong but it's just what i sort of generally come across myself i, I think what i was just thinking then when you were saying that is what is what transcended a lot of the the mbas was their sincerity towards things mm. and again i think that culturally there's an element in the uk where sincerity and earnestness is a bit frowned upon as as we know from kind of personal connections being too earnest is often a kind of source of bit you know mockery a little bit (laughs) and the guys on the NBA you know even the ones who didn't come from particularly kind of work high achieving background we had some people who were very sporty instead Mm. I mean grand kudos to them like you know me I'm not that sporty (laughs) or begrudgingly run 5k a week when was the last time you saw a gym (laughs) I walk past a gym. Okay. No, I don't no, remember. I walk past cycle, spelt P S Y C. Yes. <laughs> More like psycho. <laughs> More like, I wonder how much classes are there? Ridiculously expensive, methinks. <laughs> yes. Would you also like a, a complimentary smoothie? Well, what can I say? Um, yes. Sorry, we've gone off topic. <laughs> yeah, no. Worries. Um, so you know, I judge the people and cycle every day. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you can't say anything. You wanted to sign up to a gym which was one hundred and fifty pounds a month. They had. <laughs> I don't, I don't look. Indoor look. rope hanging yoga. You look. hung upside down off a rope and did yoga. Okay, that, look, my friend, is worth one hundred forty no, pounds. No, month. no, it's not. Look, I am a <laughs> look. I am a chap, a man. Who like lives, breathes? Well, I look. If I was to leave this mortal coil tomorrow, I would pray it would be in a gym. <laughs> it's like, it's like, Sorry, hang on a second. Yes, not in the arms of your lover. No. <laughs> like, look. Right, well, this interview's over. <laughs> 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 no, it's been nice talking look, to everyone. Bye. Look, look, I spend like I'm just making the point right now. I spend five to six days. Working you treat out yourself in the gym. to an expensive gym. Yeah, like yeah. I'm not going to pay a hundred and fifty pounds to go to a gym. 
<laughs> I'm going to get that really expensive gym one day. Yes, I'm um, sure. But and then no. I won't go. I'll go as yeah. best as frequently as I want to the gym. And, and I'll laugh because you'll be subsidising the gym to the tune of £150. <laughs> what I was saying about sincerity. Yeah. See, we can't even have a conversation about sincerity and earnestness because it makes us so uncomfortable. Um, <laughs> so, yes, the sincerity and earnestness and the, the high achievingness that's really bad English, of the course was okay. particularly inspirational. I mean, like I said, we had like Olympic standard rowers, Olympic standard sailors. Mm. We had people with PhDs. We had people who'd set up companies, sold companies, people who were running companies. Like, it was, it was crazy. And just being in that environment, it's hard to actually pin down like one, that like question you asked me earlier, you know, what did you learn from it? It's hard to pin down one thing where you can say one or two things where you can say, oh, and then I learned this and this. Yes. It's just swimming in that sea just gives you constant inspiration. Like I remember like there was times where I'd just be walking through the corridors, the weird Harry Potter corridors in the Judge Prison School. And I'd be like, oh my God, I need to write this down. This is such a great idea. Like this is going to change this. If I do this, if I do this, this, mm. this, this, this. And like I said, the actual core idea of my business idea hasn't changed, but that was only the core. It's like one thing, everything yeah. else around it. It was, like I said, it was, it was in classes. It was what people talking to me. I'd be like, wait a minute. I need to write this down. This is really important. I've just had a great idea. Um, it was just, it was just so good. Uh, and yeah, the 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 environment was was brilliant. Um, and like I said, we we I was involved in the women's leadership group as well, which was brilliant. Um, and they we didn't manage to do as much as we want just because the the intensity of the course is so high. Yeah. But even just being surrounded by like kind of like minded women and being able to say right. Does anybody here object to being a high achiever? No. Again, mm. like not having to hide the fact that you you you're kind of a swatty know it all high achiever, <laughs> <laughs> which most of the time you do outside of the that environment. Yeah. So how many ladies were involved in this group? Uh there was, there was about depended like day to day there was about six or seven of us. Okay. But then whenever we did events and stuff, we used to get about 15, 20, 30 people turn up depending on what we were doing. So it was quite nice. So that's Catherine, the girl I uh, lady. Yeah. Who's o- over in Australia. Um Critty, she was involved in it as well. She was great. Um oh my god, Blair. Amazing Blair. <laughs> Me and Blair trying to do the website. Yeah. Team IT, hashtag team IT again. Team IT ruling the world. Uh, yeah, I think the uh, the slightly nerdy PhD, IT PhD uh, lads who ran the U- U- Cambridge server were probably quite fed up with us contacting them. <laughs> Why so? Because we just kept asking them really dumb questions and then eventually I was like, no, wait, what happens if we do that? Oh, it's working. <laughs> okay. Um, when... So now we have a women leadership website. Okay. And that's still up running? As far as I'm aware. I handed it all over to the next cohort. They probably just deleted it and were like, I'll start that again. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I mean, we had, we, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was just a nice experience all around. Like, a, mm. it, intense. You're doing it in one year. Yes. So you have to do exams, you have to do essays, you have to do readings, you have to go and do work experience, you know. Uh, you have to try not to run out of money, you have to keep yourself fed, watered, etc., etc. So, you know, there were some days where I was getting up at like five o'clock in the morning, going straight into uni, starting at uni at six o'clock in the morning, yeah. working really hard. I mean, I, I one thing I do regret out of the MBA is I put a bit too much pressure on myself in the first term, first semester. How so? Um, just because I think that the the... And I said this to a few different people. You at Cambridge, like I didn't get into Cambridge to go to undergrad. I didn't get into Oxford to go to undergrad. <laughs> Oxford rejected me, which is another reason why I didn't do their stupid MBA. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, not, not hashtag bitter. not over it. Um, <laughs> hashtag so, not bitter. Ah, hashtag uh, not dead to me. Like, mm, hashtag Cambridge. Hashtag is Cambridge away. No. Same, same with her. I got rejected from Bath University, and I refused to say the word properly because they rejected me. Like, you, like, well, Bath. You know what? I really wish I had a camera right now, <laughs> just so people could actually see the face you're pulling. As I'm you're glad they Bath. don't have a camera yeah, right now. Look, yes, like you have got a slanket on, which is the. <laughs> The the prime example of a lady who's got too much money. <laughs> it's like, and it's a proper, it's an official slanket as well. It's not some knockoff. Yeah, yeah, market. no, no, no. You know what? Um, like you do you in the slanket. It is a slanket branded slanket. Okay. Um, okay, so back on track. Yes. 
uh, yes. So one of the things that I I do regret is in the first semester I put too much pressure on myself because I just felt a bit overwhelmed by the fact that, that I'd spent so much money on this course, I'd quit my job, I'd moved us up to Cambridge. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, that, as as mean as I am, it did cross my mind that I dragged you out of your home city of forty three years at that point to go to a reasonably small town on the English Fens, my in, at the end of the world basically after cambridge is king's london and the sea um yeah because yeah i forget that not everybody moves as frequently as i do it's lucky you're pretty (laughs) (laughs) i've realized i realized today that we're on an 18 month move cycle at the moment which is an improvement on my 12 month move cycle yeah no but put it this way you if you decided we're gonna move in 12 months that ain't gonna happen i'll be like no well, we'll see. No. Um, <laughs> I just, I just, like, to the rest of the world, listen to this. No. Yes. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, so, yeah. Um, and and, and no. that, um, also, I was trying to avoid being, and this sounds really, really weird thing to say, I was trying to avoid being too social. And I think I said this to you at the time. So one of the, my one of my big problems is is that, and I found it in different workplaces and different different times of my life is that because uh, I am normally a reasonably sociable person, it means yes. I'm, I'm not very good at saying no to going out and drinking. Um, I didn't. I haven't known this about you. Yeah, I know, right? Um, I didn't. I actually actively avoided a little bit of socialising on the NBA, and I regret that a little bit. So, uh, like I said, there was two elements to why that happened. In, mm. in part because of the pressure that I put on myself to achieve, and I felt a bit overwhelmed with being at Cambridge and being surrounded by all these amazing people who'd done so much. And I was like, oh my god, all I've done is work for nine years. Um, and and the fact that I wanted to, you know, not really get dragged into too much socialising because I knew that I wouldn't. Uh, you know, in terms of the kind of caliber of people there, I would say that I was kind of, you know, not bottom third, but you know, I'd, oh come I'll, I'll on be, now, you know, I'll come really, on, I'll be really sick about my own abilities. I'm, I'm, always, I'm, you know, there's no point in in bigging yourself up and then messing up because you assume that. So one of the most important life lessons that I've ever I've ever learned uh, out of my A levels, first first year, first ever set of AS levels, I thought the ones you do at Christmas, I failed every single one because. I'd never had to work in a school environment. Mm-hmm. I'd rolled through my GCSEs with very little revision, et cetera, et cetera. And I turned up on my A-levels and I assumed that I could do exactly the same thing. And I couldn't. So you've got to be realistic about your own capabilities. And I knew that I was, at best, you know, mid, mid-50s, on you know, 50% of uh, in in that group of people okay. and if i started to go out a lot and if i started to to socialize too much and, and not actually apply myself i would i would not do well in the mba okay yeah and and whilst you don't get graded on the mba you can still fail it yeah no i uh yeah you can still fail it and if you spend you 45 want, to fifty thousand yeah, pounds you do not want to exactly you don't want to blow I put that far money. too much commitment into this and mm. so that's my only regret and i feel like i could have got that balance a little bit better if i hadn't kind of freaked out a little bit and i got i re- i i hope that i recovered that balance towards the second and third semester but i stayed a reasonably quiet personality on the course which i think would surprise a lot of other people who knew me but to me again as as, as harsh as this sounds I wasn't there to make friends. And I have made friends. I was very fortunate to make friends out of it. But I was there to study first and foremost. Mm. Um, Which is, yeah, it was was uncomfortable. I found that an uncomfortable element of it. Okay. So with regards to the people you've made friends with, um, like... How like how many would you say you're like from the course? Would you say you're still in contact with now? Uh, probably about five or six. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. So I'm seeing you know, particularly the guys that are in London. Obviously, catch up with people in London. Yeah. A couple of people in America. I message every now and again. Like you know, there'll be people that I will I will I perhaps won't speak to for a little while. But if I was ever out in their neck of the woods, I would absolutely one hundred percent get in contact with them. Mm-hmm. Um. And like I said, I feel like I could do more in that area as well. Um. And it's but it's hard, you know. Everybody work. Everybody's working really, really long hours. Yep. Um, we're a little bit out of London itself. You know, we're not. You know, a lot of the lot of the guys who are living in London are actually kind of very city centre based. We're North London. Uh, so there's just a, you know, I could I could do more in that area, and I'm well aware of that. But I again. I, 
perhaps perhaps again it's because I'm a little bit older so like I'm probably like four or five years older than the average person on that course okay three or four years older and you do reach a point where you're like I can't bother to go out <laughs> I just want to go home I'm tired so would you say the age was the age a barrier to some of the things with people yeah I mean certainly I've noticed that mo- like there was the, I tended to be friends with the older older kind of set of people. Not to say I didn't have friends amongst the younger group as well. Okay. But generally, the, the ones I got along with best were of kind of plus 30s as well. Mm. Um, and I think in retrospect, one of the advice, you know, I, I've had a couple of people reach out to me on LinkedIn for advice about it. They're thinking of doing an MBA. And I've one of the things that I have said to them is if you are a bit older, certainly if you're older than kind of 33, which I was, mm-hmm. I would seriously consider doing the EMBA instead. Because you're just closer to that age group. Right. Um, you will be the younger of the cohorts rather than the older of the cohorts. And obviously, it being an older cohort group, there is less emphasis on the kind of socialising. And it's more for... If you want to go to the MBA like I did to study... Yes. Then the EMBA might be better for you. Um, you don't get the same career experience. You do so you don't do the work placement stuff. But again, for me, that probably wasn't actually that relevant. I don't need more work experience. Mm. Although it was enjoyable, I liked the project that I was on. What was the project you were on? Um, I was looking at marketing for a luxury car manufacturer. You can say. We're no, not, I can't. Um, you can't? No. Nope. Really? Oh. Yes. You're locked down. Locked down. I have to kill you if you ever mention that outside of... <laughs> <laughs> I, I do, promise that. Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, admire, I, admire, <laughs> I admire your subtlety. Yeah, thanks. Uh, um, so yes, we. Uh, it, but like I said, so so I, that that's kind of my advice to people who are a bit older, perhaps had a bit more experience. If you're mm. certainly plus thirty five, I would recommend doing the AM, EMBA. It takes a bit longer. It's an eighteen month course. But you do it at the weekend. You probably need to drop down to four days a week work. But again, if your company will support that, you means you've got the benefit of still working as well. Yes. Um, and in retrospect, I mean, I did look at actually at one point of uh, during the run up to the MBA, I actually did look at switching courses, switching from the MBA to the EMBA. And I discussed it with them. Um, and in the end, I decided that it was probably just not quite the right thing to do for me. I was right, right on that edge between the two. Yeah. Um, so that is my only advice as well. OK, great. Hmm. Uh, this has been very informative. No, I hope it has been oh, for yeah. all our diversions and stupid jokes. <laughs> uh, all very necessary, no doubt. Um, okay, so with regards to the next, say, five years, what is? Do you have a plan, or is there just you're not you're just going rolling with the punches? Am I? Uh, by the end, by five years, yep. I want the, my, to settle my business. Mm-hmm. I would like us to be profitable. I'd like to be able to earn a living out of it, even if it's not an amazing living at that point. <laughs> um, I don't know when in that five years that will happen. Yep. I would like it to be sooner rather than later because uh, I still think there's a gap in the market and I don't want somebody else to fill that gap before I get a chance to do it. Okay. Um, so there, yeah, that's my that's my end goal. Um, obviously, as well, there's family considerations uh, for us. You know, you never know what's going to happen in the future. Um, so there's that element for me to consider. And, and in all, in, again, and this is a very female perspective on the MBA, one of the reasons why I wanted to do the one-year course as opposed to a two-year course was just because time ticks by understood um and you know i would have been 35 leaving the two-year course i'd have had to do a year's worth of work again i probably wouldn't you know and by that point i'm getting up to 37 38 to start a family and that's getting later Mm. Uh, and if you do have problems conceiving then that you have compounded your problems so i i think again that's my other piece of advice Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> All my different pieces of advice. I've just got one piece of advice. Two. Two pieces of advice. Uh, okay. Right. Yes. Um, oh. so, but if you are a woman, consider the time frames that you're working in as well. Again, be realistic. Always be realistic about things. Be realistic about what you want out of life. If mm. you want a family, don't start an MBA at 35. Okay. <laughs> that, I wonder why. We did have one amazing woman from china who literally had a baby on the course 
she was pregnant. She was like four months pregnant when she started the course. She had the pre- the baby at Christmas. Yeah. Then she came back two weeks later. She was back into the, in. I mean. Oh, you see, that's now that's what you call a legend. That is commitment. That, oh, I yeah. mean, uh, uh, all no the women, excuses. all the women were just like, <laughs> what? Yeah, no excuses. None there. whatsoever. She's rolled in at full. She never took. I don't actually think. I think she took one week out of the course because, like, luckily, luckily, it fell over the Christmas period as well. But you can fair play, man. <laughs> Jeez. Um, and so, then you had to like someone had the audacity to complain about it's a little bit too chilly yeah, in the room. Yeah, yeah. At that point, somebody, <laughs> that, somebody's yeah. like, "Oh yeah, I can't come into lecture because I've got a bit of a head cold." <laughs> that, <laughs> <get> the, <laughs> yeah. um, a head cold. She just had a baby. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, limp, I'm like dragging myself into the baby. Like, no, she just had that kid. You can get into. It. <laughs> um, so yes, um, so yeah, you you got to consider that as well. So the you know, end of the five years, I really want that company to be set up and running, and that to be my full time job, and to be like I said, I don't expect to be earning mega bucks out of it at that yep. point. But you know, as long as I can cover, as long as we can cover our expenses and we can live, and we don't have to live under railway arch and eat beans. Um, nothing wrong with beans. Nothing wrong with beans. Some for, good eating there for a couple of weeks. <laughs> nobody nobody <laughs> want to be on beans after a year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already over a little bit over sausages and mash, and that's at the upper end of the uh, emergency food. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's 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 the plan, and uh, I think I'm ticking along nicely towards that. To be honest, we we're still making progress, me and my business partner. And the one great thing, we got a little bit distracted in the kind of ecosystem of venture finance. Okay. Um, and we went off on some tangents and things that weren't particularly helpful. But actually, we've we've had you know in the last few months we've refocused our efforts on actually building the core kind of product, and that's that's gone really great. Right. Like. We're so close to being able to just start to really bang out the code for it and actually mm. get something that works. And we've got something that works, but we can we can either go back to the venture capital markets and see if we can get um yeah the first round funding, seed funding, yeah. or or we can uh, see if we can bootstrap it somehow. It's that, or potentially going to partnership with an existing existing provider. It's, we'll look at accelerators. So it's, and again, this is all the kind of knowledge that I gained from the MBA of that environment. Like I had no idea how you got money for a, co- for a company <laughs> like and it was one of the, a genuine one of the quest- like things I had and I'm sure I could have found out if I googled it but there's a difference between googling it and actually having somebody yeah. who's done it say stand up in front of you and say look this is how it works this is your share classes this is how you actually structure it you know etc cetera, etc cetera. Mm. um so yeah so that's that's the plan so once we've got once we've got the wireframe development done of our product we will then consider our next steps to be able to get to get to launch so we will have a minimum of our product and we will get to our minimum demonstrable product, get to our minimum of our product, and then we, we want to launch. And the, one of the beautiful elements of my business idea is that it's not large ticket sales, like low volume, large ticket. Okay. It's high volume, low tick, low value sales. Mm. So we, we should be able to launch and start to get clients and actually start to bring money into the company quite rapidly. Okay. Which would be nice. No, sounds great. Yeah. It sounds like, yeah, so you've got a very forward thinking plan. Yeah, and again, the environment is quite useful at the moment. I mean, looking at the positives, they say that raising money for uh, female-led businesses is actually reasonably difficult. But one of the things I've found is there's actually very strong reception towards female-led finance businesses. Mm. Um, I think that the, the, there's a lot of investors that are really looking for those type of opportunities. Um, and because I think we've got a strong team and we've got a strong business idea, we I, I think we could raise money reasonably reasonably effectively uh, and I am not above selling myself out in order to get money <laughs> playing the female card <laughs> if I have to <laughs> uh, high moral character uh, as always yes. Do you, would, would there be extra funding if I pretended I'm working class again oh, <laughs> I'm not above that either <laughs> you kind of are but <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. who I am. Okay. <laughs> mm. Yeah. All jokes aside, that's where that's where we want to be, and that would be I would be exceptionally happy if my if if that had worked out in that way. Okay. Okay. I have no more questions for you at this present time, but yeah, I'm not even too sure how long we've been talking for. Fifty-eight minutes and forty-five seconds. Wow. Do you think we should run this up to the sixty-minute mark? Uh, well, I've seen people will be like, I am switching off now. <laughs> you never know, but no. Um, I really got to say I appreciate you. 
uh, taking the time out to do this with me. It no is, uh, yeah, you are my first like podcast victor. I mean, host, like guest, guest, guest. Yes, I'm the host. You're the guest. So yeah, no, I really appreciate this, and I really appreciate you sharing your story. No problem with us at today. all. I will hopefully we can perhaps get some more victims on this. I mean, there's plenty of NBA people that I'm sure would be more than happy to talk to you. Um, and other people of my acquaintances. Remember, I've got a really weird group of friends. Uh, yes, I am. I look <laughs> forward to speaking to them all. I look forward to, like, yeah, uh, getting uh, this podcast out to as many people by talking to as many people as possible. Um, yeah, uh, one of the things uh, I really do think the world needs to talk a little bit more and, like, get a lot more of two-way communication rather than just sort of rabbiting on just, just one way. yeah, sh- screaming into the wind like on Twitter. Uh, uh, yes, I, like I've done that a number of times. Some like some Twitter, some YouTube. But yeah, uh, I think this can have a lot of potential. No, it's been a good conversation as well. And it's funny actually because with the, the craziness of the, the pre-NBA post, you know, during the NBA and the post-NBA, mm. it's, you don't get a huge amount of time to reflect on it. So it's actually quite nice to reflect on kind of the decision-making journey that I actually had to get there. And as you know, then, you know I've summarised it a lot and there was a lot of going backwards and forwards in terms yeah. of what I was going to do and whether it was the right decision to make. Mm. Um, and there was a lot of instances that really shaped that, that I don't, you know, you don't, it, it, you can't really give enough time and credit to in a, in even in a conversation like this so there's yeah. you know there's more that I'd be happy to come back and talk about us at some point especially like I said the kind of more female aspect of the the decision making I don't want to bang on about it because because I think that women have, an, have a completely different experience but you know we, there is a there is a different view to it from of, of being a woman than I yeah. think than a man would have to the same no but like this is the thing uh, with regards to your MBA experience it's been just just over a year now uh, since you kind of yeah, sort I finished, of finished. Sept- I finished September, September the sixth. Yeah, so it's well, yeah, fourteen months. So with that, it's just I think it's enough time to go past, so you can sort of have a clearer thought process about what's gone on, and like yeah, see where how it's taken you this far into it. Like in another year's time or two years time, you must really have a completely different perspective. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. And I, I think, I mean, like I said, I, I, it almost feels at the moment like I'm in a bit of a holding pattern with, with not really using my MBA knowledge that much. Um, mm. Almost a bit self-defensively, because like I said, I can't actually apply a lot of the knowledge and I don't want to get too frustrated with my situation. But I think that when the, I move in towards doing the business idea and I'm yeah. on that, back on that full time, that, you know, I've like in terms of organisation I have a lot of notes from the MBA funnily enough <laughs> all beautifully organised yes um, I'm sure I'm yeah, sure oh my god so beautiful <laughs> and um, so and modest as well <laughs> oh would you say I'm not good at organising <laughs> things I mean I would say it's pretty much my only strength in life I'm it's actually uh, the only, uh, between that and Excel is the only thing that's given me success <laughs> <laughs> I think you need to lean more on the Excel oh well, I'm not organising your computer for you now. Um, <laughs> well, he who has everything spread across his desktop. Know, oh, monster. I'm sorry, but like, yeah. 10,000 unread emails. You know what? Hey, what can I say? You can you say this, but you know, you, you can't fight it. You want to know why? <laughs> if you told me I could organise your laptop, I would literally spend all night doing it. I, you'd, four o'clock in the morning, you come out and I'd be like a raccoon in a bin. <laughs> 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 yes, I, I'm sure, I'm sure, but nevertheless. So yes, come back to me. Let's. We should. We should just talk about this again when the business idea gets gets underway. Because absolutely, I. I mean, I'm more than happy to share the the pitfalls of even you know the one where we've fallen already. Uh, uh, I'm not. I'm not embarrassed about the mistakes that I make no no I'm but happy to have a laugh about them and share them with the people so they can hopefully avoid them yeah no but like this is a thing it's all about the journey process uh, and being able to tell that fully it gives you much more of a clearer perspective of where like where you've been where you are and where you're going and I find when people don't actually talk that through that's when they sort of get stuck or they start repeating the same mistakes time and time again 
So, yeah, you know, like, yeah, I would definitely look forward to, like, chatting with you about this again. And, like, yeah, see where it's, like, going to be uh, taking you. Because, yeah, I would say you have very exciting times ahead uh, when it comes to the business side of things. So, yeah, what I would say is, yeah, be bold, be strong and stay focused. I'm probably not going to be bold or be strong, but I will stay focused. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll be bold. Two out of three ain't bad. Well, yes. Are you saying that? Well, yeah, well, I'm sure we can get three out of three. No, Ooh. but that, that doesn't work in the context of the Meatloaf song. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, shall we wrap it up? <laughs> yes, on that note, we'll bring this to an end. Because I'm getting an urge to sing, and you might want to switch no, off these microphones. No. <laughs> <laughs> on that happy note... <laughs> I shall say goodbye to you, my friends, uh, from myself, me, Raddy B. Uh, goodbye, his friends, from my, me, Carolyn Goddard. Yeah, so have a good day, my friends, my life warriors. Uh, if you're still here at this point, I would like to say thank you very much for listening to the first podcast interview uh, I've ever done. <laughs> um, yeah, it is what it is. And yeah, I promise uh, to make things better for the future. Sorry like, if I kept hitting the microphone. My bad. <laughs> I'm sure that is just going to be the first of many things I need to rectify in this. But yeah, <laughs> thank you, one and all. And thank you, Miss Goddard. Have a good night. Have a good day. Have a good morning, wherever you are. See you later. Bye bye.